welcome back everyone really excited for this one because today we are going to be creating a procedural bulgy cube kind of thing inside of Maya this is going to be a completely procedural method and uh, the reason I'm very excited about this is because it's kind of opens up in door to many other ideas because the procedural method is pretty interesting although it's a small step but it does gives a lot of ideas to new things so I really hope you enjoy this video and understand the concept behind this how this is work so let's get into it now I'm going to start off by taking a simple cube and uh, we can pretty much scale this up and let's scale this up first all right somewhere right about there I think it's good enough and I'm going to make this 5 and division will be somewhere about 5 okay I think this is fairly enough reasonable amount of subdivisions and from here we are going to add a new material to this let's take standard surface and we'll call this bulge that's it so from here the work of primitive is done and let's get into the hyper shade because here where everything is going to be built up this is where the magic happens so i'm going to go to the graph editor and we have a simple node area and uh, let me just close this down first all right so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to take a 2d texture for this to add a kind of a procedural bulge i'm going to go to maya and if you scroll down you'll see something called as bulge you also have checker cloth and so on grid and so on but i'm going to take the bulge here all right let's bring it here and for the bulge you have many options like you can change the width for both of this u and v directions i'm going to keep it to default it's not going to matter us anyway you can also change the color if you want or offset and so on but i'm not going to control anything from the overall bulge because as i said this is a procedural method so we have to create a kind of a bridge for this so i'm going to take a color correct node ai color correct you can also go to arnold search for color correct and you can get the color correct node i'm going to attach my color to the input here and from here i can pretty much manage this how much i want this now as you can see this is not uh, rendering and this is a common problem with my and Arnold, so you can simply click on the refresh and pause and start again so let's reduce the amount we have and increase the contrast and i'm going to create something about right there so we have a rounded kind of cube looking things we can always go back and change it doesn't matter anyways and i'm going to turn on is uh, alpha is luminance and attach the color to the displacement shader that's it so let's go back to the original cube and let's check out our IPR although we uh, I do have a simple HDR just for the lighting purpose you can also use physical sun and sky or a direction light now as you can see this completely ruins our geometry as you can see it looks completely messy so to fix this the first thing we have to do is go back to the cube shape go to Arnold and in the displacement attributes the height has been set to 1 which is too much so I'm going to change the height to 0.100 now even though height is set to 100 we still doesn't see exactly what we are supposed to see right and second thing is i'm going to add some subdivisions to this because we don't have a lot of geometry here and we can always go back and change it from the here but i think it's really important that we control it from the subdivision catalog because that way we don't have to kind of slow down our viewport it will only be rendered in the final render or in the ipr so i think that is a pretty nice method so i'm going to increase the subdivision here so I think Cataclyc 2 iteration is good enough. Now let's fix the overall bulge and I'm going to change a little bit material here just so we can see a bit clearly. And now we have something like this. Okay. And maybe increase the overall roughness so you can see even better. All right. So we have something like this. Let's fix this. Now if I go to the UV editor and if I look at the UVs, as you can see, this is a planar mapping, which is obviously because it's a default primitive. That's why the UVs have been sorted out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to select my cube first, go to the UV and I'm going to say automatic mapping. And this way I'll get all six sides. All right. And from here, what I'm going to do, it still doesn't fix the overall problem. As you can see, we have something like this unusual pattern going on and the really simple way you can fix this is by simply going to your layout and changing from into square to tile and there you go that's it so as you can see we still doesn't have the exact look what you want so to fix that i'm going to let me just go to the object mode select this go back to the cube shape and for the height i'm going to say 0.05 maybe 
and I think we have to reduce even more so I'm going to 10 all right so now as you can see we get some reasonable amount of subdivision so I think 20 is good enough now we have to add sub subdivisions to this I'm going to add cataclac 3 and now it looks perfect so let's take a camera and create a nice little render region and let's call this bulgy and let's take a 1k square and I'm going to keep this as progressive render and the settings will be default for now let's take a camera to start off with and let's go to the camera bring this out and focus this to something like this make sure the film gate is on and lock your camera from here I'm going to start off my IPR again and let's bring this right about there and from here let's get into the shading although the material looks pretty good for me as it is now but we're still going to change our material just a little bit all right so we are going to create a subsurface scattering and a bit of transmission material for this a little bit translucent so make sure you have opaque turned off the first thing now let's get into the bulge shader and i'm going to make the diffuse to completely zero and the roughness will be zero as well for now uh, we can always go back and change this and for the transmission i'm going to change the value to 0.800 all right so as you can see we have a little bit of glassiness going on and for the color i'm going to choose something like maybe something like this okay i think this looks good and i'm going to add a little bit of depth to this maybe two and the color will be somewhere about something like this I think this looks good and if you don't have any idea about the transmission or overall parameters how this is working I've already made a video on this it's called how to create a glass material so you can check that out if you want to know more about transmission moving on let's go to the subsurface menu now and I'm going to make the subsurface weight to 1 so as you can see we have a nice little subsurface going on I'm going to change the overall color to the same color as we took for the transmission over here i'm just going to make the color a little darker all right something right about there i think it looks perfect uh, just so we have a different variation for both of the colors now for the second thing i'm going to do the same as the depth color for the scatter color and i'm just going to make this a bit lighter to something like just so we have some variation going on and let's change the scale to 0.500 again if you don't have any idea about the overall subsurface I've already made an in-depth video explaining everything there is to subsurface so make sure you check that out if you want to know more moving on I'm going to switch the random walk type to random walk 2 and anastrophy will be 0 at the end I'm going to add some code to this so I'm going to make the weight to I think 0.5 will be enough for this extra shininess and um, I think I'm going to change the overall IR to olive oil and something like this and make the overall roughness to zero again as you can see I'm going for a pretty shiny material and I'm going to change the IR for this as well so olive oil and now as you can see we have this kind of material going on which looks pretty nice so again if you have any doubt regarding this procedural method feel free to ask me if you have any question uh, experiment with this you can pretty much take any image you want and use it as a displacement or procedural method and if I go back if I let's for example if I want to change something I'm going to close this I can go back here and from the bulge I can make this maybe like 0 0.05 all right and let me just deattach this and let me just do the same for this all right so we can pretty much change mess around with this if you don't like a certain look let's make this 0.3 maybe so we have something like this in the color correct uh, we can mess around with this to make this complete circle as well and let's attach this again and let's see how this is reacting to the overall design so now as you can see we have this kind of a pinchy look so again have fun with this play around with different kinds of technique you have mess around how, how the overall look you have on this play around with different shaders this opens up a lot of doors to new ideas this is just a beginning so find a good texture if you don't have a good texture you can create it on photoshop bring any 2d map you have and play around with it so there you go have fun again thank you for watching stay home stay safe and i'll see you next time